when your climate sucks, only makes sense to change it. Not sure they should be working with real estate at all. Okay. Hello and welcome to your weekly news dump. My name is Arte. I'm CEO of Accord Properties. And this is your weekly news about Dubai, Dubai's real estate, and everything I found interesting this week, really. Please like, subscribe, press the bell icon. Let's get into the news. So the most important bit of the news this week is how terrible Ram and al been to me. Nobody comes back to me properly to in any way rectify my grievances. I'm absolutely unhappy with their service. My car having issues non-stop now. It's having two new issues while I was trying to rectify the previous two, right? And um, that's unbelievable. I'm sorry, but that's unbelievable. That's something I absolutely find terrible. Also, you see my inspirational poster is still up there, although I rearrange my studio mostly. I keep that up there because I don't know, I just forgot to take it off really from the last week's skit. Uh, that's about it. It's And that tells you how busy the week was. Um, week was busy. Week was a bit hectic. I barely got any sleep. We're planning live stream tomorrow because I'm recording it on Friday, on Saturday. I hope we're going to do a live stream. Otherwise, well, I reworked my studio, so a lot, a lot of stuff got done. Every time I complain about stuff being too busy, I actually get stuff done, which is great. Uh, we had a lot of job interviews this week as well, which is always draining on me because you need to actually concentrate on that. You can't do something else while you're doing that because people get offended. And that's tiring for me, unfortunately. Otherwise, let's get into the news. There's nothing else I can say, really. Let's start with the news, which completely overtook the rest of the news in Dubai on Friday. I'm, as I'm reading that, it's the rains. I lived in UK and lived in Russia, you know, and um, in UK, UK's inability to handle snow, I found hilarious. Right here, it's the same story, but here they don't get snow and their complete inability to handle rain is just as hilarious. But once again, in Russia, you got snow for half a year and UK you got rain for half a year. Here you got neither. There's just a few rains a year. But this one was really heavy and it flooded a lot of places. A lot of roads been closed. A lot of lanes on the roads been closed. If the road, one side of the road dips and ends up as a one massive puddle, I hated being closed. The only upside of my car currently is me being able to wade from a, through a waist deep water and let, they're not letting me use it. Let me use my car as a boat. I should be allowed to, please. But otherwise, yeah, uh, there's more rains in UAE every, every year. And that's very good. That's something great because yeah, they bring a bit of inconvenience but at the end of the day they essentially terraforming their own country which is pretty impressive let's let's just say we need this experience of terraforming areas and i know climate change is bad but when your climate sucks only makes sense to change it on to the next news So I had to subscribe to Arabian Business with fake email address to read this article, so you better appreciate that. This is one of two, the most expensive news this week. This one is uh, just a tour inside the most expensive property in Dubai, and it's on sale by Sotheby's, like most of the most expensive properties, although I have my own opinions on their ability to advise you correctly on the purchasing process. I know they have incredible book of incredibly well off clients and they leverage in that and I appreciate that and I respect that but not sure they should be working with real estate at all okay so it's 750 million dirham or 204 million dollar uh, property and quite honestly it's called the marble palace <laughs> and uh, 
it is what what it's called. It's a lot of marble and a lot of gold and very palatial in its nature. Not sure it's my cup of tea or really anybody's, to be frank. But it's massive, huge house with somebody clearly sparing no expense and not necessarily hiring a nice architecture firm, but hiring... Well, actually, it should be expensive. They should have went all the way to the 17th century to hire someone. That can't be cheap, but a lot of gold leaf and marble. That's all it looks like. Not something I would do, but honestly, it's their money, and if they like it, good for them. If they manage to sell it and find somebody else who likes it, all the better, you know? <laughs> Great. <laughs> Congratulations. Please keep in contact with the buyer because you guys are soulmates. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's not great. It's not great. It's better than golden unicorns, but not great. <laughs> yeah, on to the next news. And the second bit of the news in the most expensive is the most expensive penthouse. I actually... I'm pretty sure there will be some kind of discount negotiated at some point. But this is actually sold for record-breaking penthouse price. So the most expensive apartment in Dubai is now apartment in a um, building called Como, made by Nahil, made right on a palm. Honestly, not my favorite building. I wasn't highlighting it all that much. There's... The way it's done is the location is not quite the best, although it's very good. And the, with the location you've got, a lot of apartments which are on a lower price scale, on the lower floors, are not great. They just have terrible views onto the wide five-lane road, I think, and... Essentially, you buy an expensive premium development and you get an ending up with your windows facing an overpass. I'm not sure if those apartments have been sold and who bought them, but if the guy's happy, they're happy. Once again, this, um, this is not investment. This is not a market indication. This is top of the line, incredible penthouse. It's, it features incredible pool. You can see from the pictures, the pool is actually a whole floor of the apartment, essentially having 360 views off the palm onto Dubai. Incredible. You cannot get it anywhere else, anything near that. This is bought by someone for their personal use. In no way in hell they want to be treating it as an investment. They're treating it as a treat for themselves. A certain collection piece, you know, something they can be proud of owning. And yeah, this is a unique penthouse and it's Incredible with private lifts, with number of floors, with huge floor area, 22,000 square foot, I think. And yes, it's beautiful, it's incredible, but you need to keep in mind, these people who buy that, they're not investors. Well, usually they're investors in different stuff. But they buy this as a toy, as something they really enjoy, something they buy for themselves. It's never financial investment in their mind when they buy one of those Although it's being delivered in quarter four, 2027, which is not very soon. They're taking their sweet time to build that building. But once it's delivered, good for them. Hopefully they'll enjoy the purchase. On to the next news. This one is not necessarily about Dubai. It's about Dubai Airshow, but it's specifically the Beyond airline, which I'm very interested in because it's a business class only airline and... I am fairly frequent business class traveler, so I always looking at the things and Emirates business class is not the best by far. And I'm always upset that they're the best deal ar around in many cases for me flying out of Dubai for obvious reasons. And their interiors are a bit worn. They are due for upgrade, but I heard they're looking to upgrade them soon, so that only makes sense. 
when they used to when they rolled them out they've been top of the line but not anymore and here the new cabin of the a390 which is just 44 seats business class only and frankly if you're traveling as a couple it's all right it's not a problem it's not too bad but for solo travelers like i am i'm a lonely person who travels alone a lot but uh, this is like couples only it feels like a lifestyle business it's not the real business class where you use it to not lose a time out of your life you use it to actually do some conspicuous consumption some luxury consumption that's frankly upsetting that's frankly boring not real business class it's more like very comfortable airline okay luxury airline position that business class is because you've got business to be done and you can't lose time changing time zones getting catching some sleep getting massage after your flight because you got stuck in a certain position for 12 hours looks really nice aesthetically not the worst business class in the world but given they rolling it out as we speak very underwhelming very unfortunate because i hope they're gonna fly to from dubai to maldives and i would use that oh well on to the next news this article uh from one of my favorite news sites in dubai the time out dubai talking about why there is so much damn traffic in dubai and there is so much damn traffic in dubai i was recently stuck in a traffic jam one o'clock in the morning i was going from the office one o'clock in the morning because things went just this way and well just had to do some stuff and wrap up some loose ends and i'm thinking at least i'm getting to home fast right no no traffic jam traffic jam half past midnight one o'clock in the morning traffic jam stuck in the traffic waiting it is unbelievable and they go through the reasons and the reasons are they're saying are positive and yeah obviously for you guys it's a very positive thing because right now getting your uae driving license which is requirement for every uae resident so once you get your visa in uae you're required to get the local driving license if you want to drive here you cannot use your other country's driving licenses at all before you got your emirates id you can use your international driving license so that's great but honestly if you got your driving experience and you had your driving license for a while and your driving license from a reputable reputable country it will take you a day or two at the worst so why not why not um but yeah because it's so easy and because there's so much more population in dubai and we get way more taxes in dubai now so traffic getting out of hand but they're saying there is a light at the end of a tunnel because they're building way more interchanges there's a lot of road works and expansion going on in dubai as usual so i guess i get i guess things bringing me good stuff in life bring me bad stuff in life which is fine i get balances there <laughs> fine okay let's get stuck in traffic as long as i keep running my business and my business keeps earning me money fair enough on to the next news this news is smp report which is um relatively pessimistic it's talking about the potential downfall in real estate prices in 2024 so a year and a bit from now s p predicts a decrease in dubai's prices for real estate and there is a reason to think that they have good reasons they say in dubai was always cyclical in their prices like well everything is cyclical just dubai cycle is fairly fast one it used to be fast one and the prices are rising to the point where the let's say end user buyers don't really find it affordable anymore and it's at the point where we are alienating a lot of people from the market a lot of news on that front coming from decrease in russian buyers in dubai but the supply of 
buyers is coming from more and more countries because we see downfall in real estate in Europe in, and in Asia. And those assets need to be traded into something appreciating, into something safer. And right now UAE is working very hard on um, establishing a safer and more reliable market than it was before. So I don't believe necessarily that we've got just one year left. I believe obviously at some point while the price is rising and rising and rising faster than inflation, someday we will see a correction, but I don't believe it's a year or even two years from now. I believe we will see a big slowdown in price increase. I believe it's not going to be multiples of inflation. It will be maybe double the inflation price rate, right? Um, but we see a lot of those pessimistic articles coming from many sides and it makes sense and it makes sense to know them and be aware that there are those risks and S&P is very reputable and obviously their opinion counts and Bloomberg writes about it and they're, they mostly know their stuff. I mean, I'm a bit more split on Bloomberg, but they know their stuff. But... I don't believe they're getting the full picture. I don't believe they're including into that the vectors of development of the city, the uh, vectors of development of the other economies feeding into this one, etc. Um, I believe they underappreciate how much is Chinese market looking to expand outside of the internal economy. I think they underappreciate the growth of Indian and Pakistan's economies. I think they underappreciate how many European economies are doing not so well right now. So we have European investors coming in as well with a lot of accumulated wealth due to the how old is European economies and this unaffordability conundrum is proven to be a non-issue for UK's real estate for decade. <laughs> for a decade now, UK's real estate was unaffordable for a normal human being, and especially in London. I mean, the rest of UK was at least achievable. London was unachievable for a decade, and it was growing and growing and growing, and some parts of London are still growing, <laughs> although very slowly now. And that just shows you that market will probably correct in liquidity terms, not in um, monetary terms. So I respectfully, extremely respectfully disagree with S&P here, but a great article to be aware of and to read about. That was a short one. But thank you anyway for making it to the end of the video. Not many people do, and I really appreciate people who watch all of our news and take time out of their day to listen to me. Once again, please like our video, subscribe, press the bell icon. That will help us promote our, our news and algorithm. And see you next week.